This episode of Family Trips is brought to you by Nissan. Whether you want more adventure, more electric, more action, more guts, or more turbocharged excitement, Nissan is here to make sure you get it. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Hi, Pashi. Sufi. This is a very exciting one today. Oh, man. Almost like a, a third brother in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the first, I think, the first guest on the show, other than our parents, that one of us fully lived with. Yeah. In a couple countries. You were roommates with Ike Barinholtz, our guest today, in Amsterdam, and then you lived with him for years in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I had a choice... Because he was going to be my roommate in Amsterdam. I was already living there. And there were two new cast members coming out. This is at Boom Chicago, the theater we worked together with in Amsterdam. Yeah. And uh, the way Ike was described is uh, he's like a, like an overgrown like child who just wants to like party and have fun. And I was like, yeah, give me, give me one of those. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was fabulous. Great roommate. Great cook. You know, that's not really why I wanted him as a roommate. I just sort of wanted wanted someone who was fun to hang out with. You just wanted a baby who loved to party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You lived in a, a, a house that is now, was was torn to the ground. In Los Angeles, yes. Yes. Yeah. Hollywood and Curson, Sunset and Curson. Sunset and Curson, it was called Camp Hollywood. By you, it was not called Camp Hollywood by like the trades. Yeah, but our friend Colton Dunn, I feel like, put the official moniker on it. But yes, it was... Uh, it was a, a lot of great parties were held there. It was yeah. a very shitty house. It was an old craftsman, and we would have parties when I was living there. And there might be sometimes, like, over the course of a night, 500 people in and out. Yeah. Yeah. There was a few details I remember about that home. Because I, I feel like I lived there two summers. Yeah. On my couch. You slept on my couch. And I was on SNL at the time. I was an SNL cast member sleeping on my brother's couch in the shittiest house in Los Angeles, which really speaks to how little you get paid your first year on <laughs> SNL. But there was a lemon tree in the backyard mm -hmm. yeah. that you wouldn't give up on. I mean, well, like I, I bought a lawnmower and I, you know, I used to mow lawns as a kid. It was like my... My job, one of my jobs. A lot of people know how to mow lawns, even if they didn't do it as kids. Yeah, but I sort of have a real love of it. I see, I see. Yeah. This, by the way, the very fact that you're saying I would mow the lawn, this was a tiny backyard. Yeah, but it, if you're not mowing it, it's not maintained. You can't, okay. uh, you know, we also had a uh, croquet set. And I challenge you to play croquet on a lawn that has never been okay, mown. So it, it re required some maintenance. Yeah. And in that maintenance, there was some maintenance for the uh, the lemon tree. Did you ever eat any of the lemons from the lemon tree? I don't think they were very good. I remember them being especially tart. They and were then pretty tart. When I moved out, they figured out that they had rats in that house. Apparently, rats love a citrus tree, and uh, they found out they had rats by setting five rat traps. And in the first night, they went five for five. They somehow caught six rats. <laughs> the rat traps, they caught five rats and then another rat who came across the bodies was so despondent, he took his own life. It was a real Romeo and Juliet. It situation. was a real, yeah, it was a real radio <laughs> and, 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 uh, and Juliet. Now, Ike had a dog named Max mm -hmm. who sort of looked like a big rat. A little bit, Is that yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but like a very well-fed, sort of a, a small, beloved, a beloved rat. Yes. Now I remember one day, and help me figure out the logistics of how this happened. You were on the second floor. Yeah. You could go out your window and go on the roof. Yes. And then there was a trellis, like an ivy trellis. I realized that ivy trellis makes this sound fancy. It was not fancy, but it was an <laughs> ivy trellis that went sort of over the driveway. Uh huh. And. I don't know how this happened, but I heard crying. It sounded like somewhere between a, a child crying or a sort of a, a rat concert. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out where the noise was coming from. And what I walked out and somehow Max, the dog, had gotten on the roof and then tried to walk onto the trellis. And his four little sausage legs went through like four different holes. Yeah. And he was just sort of wriggling around in the ivy and had to fish him out of it. But was Max often on the roof? 
Yes, because if you'd open the windows that were just above the sort of height of the couch that you slept on, you could just get right out. It was like very easy. It was like the couch became steps to get you onto the roof. And if Max was inside and wanted to be outside, uh, there was a lot to look at from that roof. Yeah. And I we had like a couple lawn chairs up there and you a lot of times you'd get home and Max would just be tip tapping around up there. And a lot of people would say you should have known not to let the dog on the roof. Yeah. But historically, that's not a good place for a dog. I mean, he was very smart. He never fell off the roof. He just fell into the trellis, which was sort of like <laughs> a fake uh, bridge. Yeah. When I fished Max out of the trellis, I didn't think, this dog's smart. <laughs> that wasn't my takeaway. <laughs> well, he could be forgiven. He, didn't know what, he doesn't know what a trellis is. I feel as though... And tell me if this is your uh, memory, that oftentimes cars would be sort of parked on the street outside the home where I feel like sexual acts were being traded for cash. Yeah, there was a there's a, a documentary called American Pimp. Uh-huh. And it go, it's like goes to like, I don't know, five or six cities. And, uh, you know, it's about sort of prostitution. And there's a section on Los Angeles. The section that they highlighted for Los Angeles was Sunset and like Gardner to Sunset and Fairfax. And we were right in the pocket there. Um, So yeah, there was some, there was some shady business going on. We were also right behind the parking lot of a liquor store. And so that parking lot was a place where a lot of shady Activity could take place. One of my favorite details about it, the walking distance to Meltdown Comics. Oh, yeah. So I would go, yeah. I would walk. I would walk down a street that was more populated by people, maybe hopeful to exchange money for sex acts. And I would go get my little comic books and carry them right back and tip yeah. my cap. And when they would see you with your comic books, they would know you weren't interested. Yeah, that's a real... <laughs> I'm sorry, more important things afoot. <laughs> it's what's new comic day? Tuesday, Wednesdays? Wednesdays. I can't believe. How do you not know? Because <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but we spent so much time together. Yeah. I mean, I said Tuesday, Wednesday. I got, I got to Wednesday. It was my second guess. Out of seven, there were seven options and you got yeah, on well. second try. Congratulations. Well, based on that, I'm not going to tell you what Batman's been up to. <laughs> And we have a wonderful conversation with our friend Ike Barinholtz. But first, listen to a wonderful little song by our friend Jeff Tweedy. I thought this was the Bobby Lee podcast. No, this is, how dare you? This is not Tiger Belly? This is not Tiger Belly. Not only is this family trips with the Myers brothers, but there could be an argument, Josh and I have not discussed this, there could be an argument that you are the closest thing to a third Myers brother. I've been saying this for years. Oh boy, not (laughs) flattered at all. (laughs) Yeah, no, I'm honored, but it's it's like it's already in my mind. It's already, I've already been honored. Mm. It makes the most sense. Yep. Because, you know, Seth has his college friends, Hadley. Hadley? Stradley. 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 It's close enough. Uh Um, And then, you know, his, his kind of like, comedy showbiz friends like i don't know john oliver sure dear friend mm-hmm. and joshy has his showbiz friends but i'm in the, in the venn diagram and joshy has his old friends but in the venn diagram i'm the biggest presence in the shared circle that's yeah. true and you don't have any college friends because you didn't finish college right well if we're gonna go there right away <laughs> um yeah you know what i did it did you make any friends your first year my first and only year at college, I had my roommate was a guy named Himo Ku, who okay. I loved. He was great. Introduced me to kimchi, which I, I love to this day. Yeah. You now I should know that is on a long list of a hundred foods you would say you love to this very day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I was friends with like a couple guys who were just like I would say like at the time I thought they were like oh, those are bad guys. Like they're just yeah. they're just trouble. 
now they're all like married with children and they're like really nice and have like good, you know, nice jobs and stuff. But there was one guy I hung out with who was a criminal. He stole a bunch of stereo equipment from another guy in the dorm. So it sounds like three out of four. You made three out of four good friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys go, do you guys go away? Do you guys do trips? You yeah, and those we guys? Do. Yeah, you and we Hemo do. and those other two guys? Yeah, we're all in uh, fantasy hockey. And once a year, we do a uh, draft together, and we change different locations based on the winner. It's just the four of us in the league. And none of us are what I, are what I would call hockey fans. So it's not like a great league or anything. But I love now, those guys. I want to start. The reason we know you, Ike, is that we all work together in Amsterdam at yes. Boom Chicago. Mm-hmm. An improv comedy theater that's based in Amsterdam, yes. started by yes. some Chicago guys uh, some 30 years ago now. Basically, Second City and Whose Line Is It Anyways had a baby, and that baby was raised in Amsterdam, is how I would yeah. describe it. That's a good way of saying it. And you and Josh were roommates? Yes. Then you were roommates in L.A. I spent a few summers in L.A. Uh, living with you guys. So that's, mm-hmm. as far as your third brother status, we've lived with you. You know our parents. We know your parents. Yes. Yes. The love for our parents goes both ways. Yeah. You have yeah. a brother. Pretty similar age difference to, yes. to Josh and I. What do you got? How many years between you and Johnny? Six years between me and oh, John. Oh, so it's a bigger. Yeah. It's a way bigger gap. Yeah. But you guys grow up in Chicago. Yes. The four of you. You're a core four family as well. I just wanted to marinate for a second. I am the best friend that's been on this podcast. And we've had a lot of good friends, but you're the best friend that's been. Suck it, Pete Davidson. Ooh. Yep. Shots. Wow. Shots. Shots fired. I Fire. do want to note that I, I know that Ike's from Chicago because he's currently wearing a Scotty Pippen t-shirt. <laughs> so this is one of those weird 325 days out of the year that he's wearing some piece of Bulls paraphernalia. <laughs> it's Scotty Pippen with a Hor- Horace Grant kicker right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not bad. So Not bad. now, Ike. Yes, sir. Growing up, what was a Baronholtz family trip? What was the norm? And then tell us if there are any exciting outliers. I was thinking about this. We, we didn't go on a lot of trips. We were not big vacation people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we weren't, we didn't have a ton of uh, money. You know, some of our friends had money. They would go on like these big vacations. But our kind of standard trip was getting in the uh, Pontiac Sunbird. And mm-hmm. driving about five and a half hours through Indiana to Ohio, which is where my mom is from, a small town called Cedarville, Ohio, which is right next to Yellow Springs, which is the town where uh, Chappelle lives and does comedy. So we would go there. That was like our main kind of once, a, once or twice a year vacation. Is it the sexiest place in the world? Yes. <laughs> But that was like, yeah, basically our standard. And it was when I was a little kid, that was great. We loved it. You looked forward to it. Because you had a lot of family. Your mom's siblings all live like on that same street, right? They live on this giant street in the middle of the country in South Central Ohio. Also, I would get all my cousin magic there. You know what I mean? Like you get to do farm shit, get on a tractor. And it was fun going there. We would get in the car and we would drive and, and stop at Bob Evans. And Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this because we just took our family road trip. We drove to Santa Barbara this weekend. And kids these days, God damn it, they have it so nice. They get an iPad and they can watch anything they want or play a video game in the car. Like, boys. They're watching pornos? We watch, I show them some porno. (laughs) Three But it's stuff that I've selected. So it's not like weird. It's story based. It's story based. (laughs) It's it's acting based. It's character driven. Um, it's basically like the USA network of porn. Characters are gotcha. welcome. And also this, I want to clarify, three girls all watching their own thing, right? There's not even the collective viewing no. going on. No, no. One girl's watching Mean Girls in the back. One girl's watch- playing Tom's Gold Run. And then another girl's watching like Mario Brothers. That is the yeah. craziest thing that maybe when we were kids, you could conceive of a future where you'd bring the TV on a trip. Yes. But you would never conceive of a future where everyone would have their own TV. Yeah. And even the TV in the car seemed a million miles away. Our entertainment was all of us singing along to Billy Joel's Greatest Hits Volume 1 and 2. Got it. Yeah. Like, that was that was it. Yeah. And, you know, we played Punch Buggy, mm-hmm. which you can't play anymore. You don't see a lot of VW Beatles on the road anymore. Mm-hmm. We would play I Spy, and, uh, and my brother and I would kiss a little bit. That was it. <laughs> Did you? You were six years older. Do you sure Johnny wanted to play that game? 
I think so. I, I think I, I think I convinced him. I kind of groomed him into the whole process. I guess yeah. you could say. it was. A, there was a different take on what grooming was back then. This was, was guys. Celebrate. This was the '80s. This was the '80s. Everyone <laughs> chill. So you guys drove. Always your dad, Alan, behind the wheel. Always Alan behind the wheel. You know, once a trip annoyed with us at some point, like we get it. Shut up, guys. Shut up. I need to focus. Your dad is a very affable gentleman. You Very. are familiar with our father, Larry, also yes. affable, but I feel Very. like maybe red lines a little bit more than Alan did historically. I mean, I will say Alan does have a little temper. Like okay. he, he does, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and I'm sure they got mad at similar things. Dads in the eighties got mad at the same thing. It was like kids yeah. talking too much and kids fighting, you know, when my yeah. brother and I was like, he took, he took the, the last Rolo, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And Johnny would be like, no, I did it. It was mine. And my dad would be like, hey, shut up. Seriously, both of you, I want absolute quiet for the next hour and a half. But uh, I still talk to him. We, we've worked through it. You and your dad are still talking. Yeah. Yeah, we're still close. Despite that. Let's use now as a transition. This is a way. Yeah. But I, you know what? This is a family trip. And the trip is called showbiz. So you are an <laughs> improviser in Chicago. Then you're yes. an improviser in Amsterdam. Yeah. You and Josh come back to LA, same time. You both get hired on Mad TV. Yes. Pretty pretty immediately meet with some success. Your brother, six years your junior, yes. sort of decides to take the same path. Goes yes. to college, does improv stuff at college, right? Yes. Yeah, I did. Uh, I went to Colgate and was in the same improv group that the Broken Lizard guys were in. He got mm-hmm. the bug. He got the bug. Yeah, You know, and how can you not? You're a 15-year-old kid. You see your older brother on stage doing a terrible improv show, (laughs) sweating his balls off and being blue. For an audience of like nine drunk people, you're like, I have, this is the site we're to call the showbiz. Well, he probably having grown up with you had seen you sweat your balls off in almost any venue. Any room. Didn't attribute it to. You guys shared a room, didn't you, growing up? Oh, we shared a room, boy. Oh, yes. Yeah, which was, that's tough. That is, that is tough. I remember going to your apartment yeah. where you grew up. Yeah. And my boys uh, share a room now in New York City. And yep. that speaks to how much smaller a room is than you grew up in if you grew up in the suburbs. My kids oh, are okay. rocking with less space. With that said, and maybe my memory does not serve, I, I remember the room you shared with your brother being very small. Oh my God, tiny. Ver- very Genuinely small. not maybe built to be a room for people to sleep in. No, 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 no. And and again, that's where the diff- age difference started being like, there was a nice period where we were kind of both dumb little kids. But then at, when I was like 11 and I'm like, I I need to see breasts today or I'm going yeah. to die. And he's mm-hmm. like, you want to play GI Joe? <laughs> and I'm like, shut up. You know what I mean? So there was a couple of years where it was like definitely tough. Any day now, I'm going to see a pair of Hooters, and I cannot. So I it's, oh my god! Wait. So we, it still no, God, still no. I tried, it. I tried. Also, though, I think when I saw it, the other thing that took me back is you and your brother are also both very tall gentlemen. Yeah, I would imagine that when the growth spurt started, it felt like tiny, like um, the child's coffins you would see during a plague. <laughs> is what you're. <laughs> <laughs> it was so small. <laughs> Very small. Ring Around the Rosie was always playing very ominously. It was a lot. It was very plague-like. It was very, yeah, like France 1581. I think it's really funny when you don't know. We grew up in the suburbs, and obviously some people we grew up with had more money than others. I feel like we were somewhere in the middle. And yeah. then when you first meet people who grew up in the city, you realize how that's a, it's just a different, like, I don't know, it's more squeezed together maybe, the difference of what it means to have it and not have it. Yeah, you're, you're really, you're packed in there. And again, we were like, you know, definitely growing up around other kind of urban Jews, a lot of whom had money. Yeah. We were just so different. Like, I, I remember when I saw um, Uncut Gems mm-hmm. and I was like, finally, I feel seen. Like, th- this is the kind <laughs> of Jews I I ran with. Like, those right. are my uncles. Every Frantic. Jew in a movie is like either like, you know, super intellectual, like, well, I'm, I just got tenure at Vassar. <laughs> um, but like my uncles were like, if I don't have $4,000 by the end of the week, they're gonna, they're gonna fucking kill me. <laughs> like desperate Jews. <laughs> and so that was definitely like, that wasn't like my dad per se, but like that was definitely his family. Some of and was his family in Chicago? Did you 
yeah. grow up around them? Got it. I did. I grew up around his parents. Uh, his dad sadly passed away when he was pretty young, like 60. But his mom, my bubby, is still alive, 99 years old, wow. still living in Skokie. And I'm actually going to go see her in a couple weeks. And- so it's funny because that limits, I think, it cuts in half how often you take family vacations if you have one set of grandparents living where you live. Yeah, if they lived in Florida, like we would be going to Florida constantly. Right. Thank God they did it. But we would go see the Ohio relatives like usually twice a year. Got and it. that was like our, our kind of de rigueur trip until I was like 15 and we went to Jamaica. Ooh. Jamaica and was the first one. First time I went on a real trip where like it was a resort and and it was it blew my mind. What do you think was the tipping point that you took the trip then? I think it probably was like my dad probably had like a good year financially mm-hmm. in the sense where he's like, enough of this Ohio. Let's go to uh, the FDR resort in Ocho Rios, Jamaica, <laughs> uh, which was an incredible. And uh, yeah, it was it was a swingers resort <laughs> that my parents <laughs> took us to, but they, they were very respectful for the children. People forget there's a different kind of swinger. There's a swinger where it's a, you switch sexual partners and there's the one where you just take other people's children for the day. Yeah. And you just swing yes. as parents. You're like, I'm yes. going to swing over and be their parents today. And then you, yeah. yeah. And then at night, everyone swing dances. <laughs> oh, Again, this is the late eighties, nineties swing, swing was kind of bad. Swing. So you yeah. go to Jamaica and what, uh, so you're staying at a resort. Is it like an all inclusive kind of place? All inclusive place where you can walk up and say, can I have a hamburger please? And they're like, yeah, you don't have to pay for it. And then they're like, son, this is your sixth hamburger. <laughs> This yeah. is your sixth hamburger of the morning, son. <laughs> it's not even 8.15. Ike, I mean, I got to imagine at 15, can I have a hamburger? No questions asked. Nothing meant more to you. That was it. I mean, And the fact that there were like other kids there. Yeah. Some of whom were like girls, like yeah. uh, who didn't know me. That was oh, the, the, yeah. that Your reputation was did not precede yourself. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know you like that because to this day, which it, it only makes sense now, you've always said you know where they have the best hamburgers, Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Just I go three times it. a year to get a burger. <laughs> that's it, and then I leave. Uh, I was recently in the hospital. Yeah, and I had I had a little bit about a pneumonia, which was strange, and I had this amazing Jamaican nurse. And the first night I was kind of getting situated in there, she comes in. And I felt like shit. And my wife was in there. And she's like, she's think, speaking a Jamaican accent. I was like, are you from Jamaica? She goes, yeah. And I'm like, uh, I, I go, I used to go to Jamaica. Ocho Rios. She goes, that's for tourists. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I go, but I love Ting. And Ting is like a Jamaican, like a, like a almost Jamaican Sprite, I would say. It's like their mm-hmm. national soda. And she looks at me and she goes, you like Ting? And I go, yeah. She goes, you know, they have red Ting now. And I go, they have red ting. <laughs> My wife goes, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that the drink wasn't really called thing and you were just trying to make it sound Jamaican. <laughs> All these years later, you were like, oh, they were saying thing? There's an H in there. The H is not silent as it turns out. Okay. Oh, my God. I owe an apology to the nation of Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> so did you go more than once? Uh, yeah, we went twice. We went twice. Gotcha. And and that was... Uh, so maybe, do you think maybe then that's a bit of a fib when you said to the nurse, we used to go to Jamaica all the time? <laughs> all, all, if it's more than one, you could say all. You could time. say all the time. Yeah. If, I, if it was just one time, I'd be like, I went to Jamaica once. But So you go nope. twice and was that then the end of it? Were there no more? That was the end of it. I think the only other trip that we took as a family was we went to Israel <laughs> Uh, a couple years after that. Uh, and I already been at that point. Again, this is a different time, folks. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> um, but, but uh, yeah, we went to that. That was it. That was, those were our three trips, I think. And are you, are you sightseers when you go to Israel? Like, you know, Oh, yes. We, yeah. we took up, we went to climb Mount Masada. We did all the typical uh, uh, Jewish tourists things there. Was that one you were excited about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, you guys know, I'm like, I love like history. Like, I did just very interested in that. And that's like, now would be the time. I feel like he's leaving a gap for us to jump in and say that Ike is the current Jeopardy celebrity champion. 
Did you say that because of the trophy right behind me? Is that why yes? You, that's one of the reasons okay. I'm mentioning is that Thank your you. trophy is in the took shop. you long enough. <laughs> but I, you know, again, we we busted Ike early on. I will I'll, I'll admit that I busted him on on dropping out of college after a year. The man knows his shit. Who would yeah. wipe the floor with me if it comes to history in this nation or any other? So you, but you already did at that age. You you liked history and the idea. Yeah, of yeah, I, I loved it. I, I would read like they had this book called like the timetables of history, and it had like what happened every year basically in recorded civilization, and like you know whatever Jerusalem is like you know so many cultures have ran it, and it was just amazing to go. And uh, again, very different time, but uh, uh, that was a nice family trip. Again, out of control horniness. <laughs> running around seeing like all these smoke show Israelis and I'm like with my parents, you know, and I can't be like, Hey mom and dad, I'm going to go out tonight. Like it was like, I had to stay in the hotel room with them. Pine. You were fairly young when you moved to Amsterdam. Yeah. How old were you? I was 21. I think. Wow. My goodness. 21 yeah. years old. And well, I, well, you were, you, you were too, Pasha. You were 21, yeah. 22. Yeah, yeah. I think I was the same. Yeah. yeah. I was right out of college. Oh, yeah, I guess when I went, I was that age, too. I went right after college. I'm getting my timeline up. But we were young when we went there and young enough that we were still at the age when our parents would come visit us. Yes. And your parents came a lot to visit Amsterdam. And that sort of for our family became a family trip destination, even though Josh and I lived there. It was so much fun to have parents come to Amsterdam and be in a hotel and be able to go back to the apartment you lived at the oh, end of yes. the night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember my the, maybe the first or second time they came. And my dad said to me, like, we were walking down whatever, uh, uh, Hub- Hubelstraat. And uh, my dad goes, later tonight, your mom and your brother will go to the hotel room and you and I will, uh, you know, and he made the, I mean, you can't see right now, but I'm making the sign for smoking. Yeah, it was quiet for uh, me. So just for our listeners... Alan said, later tonight, Alan, your father, yeah. later tonight, your mother and your brother will go to the hotel and we'll go maybe. We'll go maybe. Smoke something. Was that the first time you smoked weed with your dad? That was the first time I smoked weed with my dad. I never really knew he smoked weed, but we went to a Rookie's coffee shop. And when he walked in, they all said his name like he was Norm in Cheers. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I walk in and it's like Frazier. They all roll their eyes. <laughs> We sat again. down and and we we bought a couple of pre rolled rookies joints. I know you guys know them well in those great little plastic cases. Mm-hmm. And we sat there and we smoked a joint. And the pot that my dad would smoke in Chicago was just dog shit. It was like brown. It was brown yeah. and it was like from Mexico via Iowa. It was just terrible. <laughs> and you smoke that crazy Amsterdam shit. And we're sitting there and he we're smoking and he's completely silent and i'm watching some soccer game and uh after like 20 minutes of can silence, i just jump in real quick your dad yes. i would i would say 20 minutes of your dad being silent was an outlier it, insane yeah. just sit there with anyone in silence <laughs> for 20 minutes is like psychotic i know that if i if my dad if i sat with my dad and he was quiet for 20 minutes i would call my mom and be like he's gone <laughs> yeah, there's no easy. There's no easy way to say this. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> He's gone, and there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do about it. So uh, after like 20 minutes, he turns to me and he goes, "Ikey, I'm uh, I'm real fucked up." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh man, like like <laughs> you guys, we've all been in that position where you're with someone and they've taken too much weed, and yeah. you're just like, fuck, I gotta, like Josh has literally been that person for me before." Yeah. Um, and so I, I took him, you know, I was like, okay. And I, I remember I was like, let's get him some orange juice. And he ordered like three orange juices in a row and like drank them. Boom, boom, boom. And then he took like a handful of Gilders and went to, you know, they have like the vending machines, but it's like uh, peanuts and cashews and yeah. stuff. And he sat there for like five minutes, just coin nuts eating it. Like it was the fastest munchies this is not a bag of nuts this is like nuts like gumball machines but not this is it's a gumball machine but it's nuts again guys different time <laughs> this was this was pre-euro we didn't know about uh, germs yet yeah no 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 you and your dad made t-shirts that said loose nuts 2000 about that trip <laughs> didn't you <laughs> with car- caricature drawings of yeah. you and your father yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he's just eating nuts in the carriage shirt. I'm just rolling. Hey, my when eyes. you're uh, when your mom and Johnny go to sleep, lose nuts. <laughs> you and me. 
<laughs> he made it. He cupped his hand like it was full of nuts and did a little gesture. <laughs> I, I remember though we got back to the room and he was very clearly stoned. And my mom kind of like picked up on it right away and like rolled her eyes. But like my brother was like, where were you two? And I was like, oh, no, we just went for a walk. And my dad goes, yeah, we went for a walk. And I was like, you cliche stone <laughs> motherfucker. Like, just just don't say anything. <laughs> You're like, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. Uh, but since then, gotten stoned together many times. And it's always delightful. Mm-hmm. Do you guys ever get high? You ever get high with your dad? Is Larry getting no, high? No, God, no. no, 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 no. I, he would never get high. You Didn't you smoke a joint with mom on a boat in Amsterdam, Josh, when she was with yeah, all her Yeah, she was aunts? on a trip with all of her siblings and her mother and a couple yes. of the uh, British cousins. I fucking remember this. A couple of her siblings sort of partake, and I had never seen mom. And she had like one hit of that joint and then she kept saying like we should get back i think Addie, our grandmother she her mother she would say i think Addie's cold and Addie just kept saying i'm fine <laughs> she's like we should Addie's cold and Addie's like i'm great but that's nice and harmless like the yeah. i remember one other time i got stolen my dad was at the premiere after party for neighbors too oh yeah i remember this story and they had rented out a bunch of hotel rooms mm-hmm. uh, at the w hotel and we're hanging out, and Seth Rogan pulls out a joint, and my dad just like the like antenna goes up, and he walks over, and I look at him, I go, just take one hit, and he took like two hits, and like the most kind of dad fucking like, you know, like almost doing like a French inhale, like like if Bosch was pretending to like infiltrate a bunch of drug dealers, that's how Bosch would smoke the fucking joint, and. <laughs> Then, like, he, like, walks away. <laughs> and then it's, like, an hour and a half later. And I was like, I got to go home. I say to Johnny, my brother, go, let's, let's, where's dad? He goes, I haven't seen him. And we had to, like, look for him for, like, 25 minutes. And we finally, like, the f- last hotel room at the very end of the hall, we open the door and he's sitting in there by himself. There's no one else in the room. And he's just sitting in a chair. And he goes, I should go home. And I was like, yeah, you should fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I think the reason mom doesn't smoke joints is because they keep going out in the gin and tonic she's drinking. <laughs> so, I guess these don't go together. Go well together. You just got to take it out before the sips. Ugh. <laughs> Too much. Hey, we're going to take a quick break and hear from some of our sponsors. This episode of Family Trips is brought to you by Nissan. Posh, these days too many people have to settle for the next best thing, especially when it comes to choosing a car. Yeah, but at Nissan, there's a vehicle type for everyone, for every driver who wants more. Whether you want more adventure, more electric, more action, more guts, or more turbocharged excitement, Nissan is here to make sure you get it. Because Nissan is all about giving people a whole spectrum of thrills to choose from with a diverse lineup of vehicles. Sports cars to sedans to EVs, pickups, crossovers with Nissan's diverse lineup. Anyone can find something to help them reach their more. What are you looking for more of, Josh? I like a nice ride. I like a nice sound system. I like something that's, yeah, that's comfortable. You like to have room to load up a bunch of gear, go somewhere, do an adventure. I do. I'm never happier than when I have sort of a a full car, a roof rack on my car. Makes me happy. And all I need is a cup holder for an iced coffee. And Nissan can provide you with both of those things. So thanks again to Nissan for sponsoring this episode of Family Trips and for the reminder to find your more. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. I have really enjoyed my Factor so far, Pashi. Have you? I have, and I've done some meal delivery kits in the past where you sort of have to put a lot of things together and they end up taking a lot of time. The nice thing about Factor is they're fresh, they're never frozen, and you could throw them in the microwave and they're ready in two minutes. Josh, what does dad say to me every time we go to a restaurant? He opens the menu and he tells me... They have chicken. They have chicken. Well, guess what? Yeah? Factor has chicken too. I love chicken, and their cranberry pecan chicken is a perfect fall flavor 
on their autumn menu. It's over 35 weekly, flavor-packed, fresh, never-frozen meals that promote a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences. It's all ready to eat in two minutes. Head to factormeals.com slash TRIPS50 and use code TRIPS50 to get 50% off. That's code TRIPS50 at factormeals.com slash TRIPS50 to get 50% off. So I do think there's a fun reveal for people who don't know. One of my first memories of your dad is we used to do an improv show. That's what we were all doing. And there was a Saturday night was late in live. Friday. Friday. Night. Friday was this uh, a late night show where it was a bunch of different improv games. There's this sort of old school, I imagine, probably a comedy sports type game called Do Run Run, where the audience yells out a name and all the improvisers have to rhyme that name in the lyrics of the the song Do Run Run. And your dad said he wanted to play it. This wasn't his first trip to Amsterdam, but he felt very confident he could win this game. Yeah, and it's a rhyming game. It's, you it's know, a the rhyming song from game. The it's, it's not a, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's not an improv game as much as it's coming up with rhymes fast. Yes. And he was very keen to, to play. And very confident. Very confident. And for the record, I sucked at this game. Like, yes. I don't think I ever won it the whole time I was there. It was just like, it's hard. It's coming up with like fast You runs. are, we all said, like, great at trivia, bad at rhymes. Bad at rhymes. Bad yeah. at rhymes. Like, after like the first two, then I'm just like, I don't know. Um, but he got up there and he kind of systematically started taking yeah. people out. It took down the low-hanging fruit right away. Yeah. Your, your Ike Barinholtzes, your Juliet Currys. Get him out. <laughs> but then he worked his way up to who I think was the pr- probably the the usual champion was Brendan Hunt. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Also, he. I think you beat him in the Celebrity Jeopardy. I didn't final? play Brendan in the Celebrity okay, Jeopardy, okay. but he he should have gotten to the. He, yeah. It was like a bad beat, but he was okay. he had an amazing game. Okay, that's Co- but, Coach Beard from Ted Ted Lasso. Coach Beard from the show friend, Ted Lasso. Brendan We're gonna play a couple of clips from episode two or three <laughs> right now, so let's watch. Uh, so, anyways, Brendan was the just the he was the champ, and my dad beat him, beat him in the do run run, and for yeah. many many years that was he would literally be like, yeah, well, I won the do run run. You know what I mean? He was very proud. This will come out uh, cruelly, which is not the intention. But my memory of it was they were all very good rhymes delivered with no charisma at all. It was a Rain Man-like performance. Yes. Yeah. He he had not been on a stage in many years. Yeah. His showmanship wasn't what it was. It was more about just like my brain still works and I'm I can I can connect these these. But it was like together. watching Deep Blue beat. <laughs> It was Gary Kasparov? Is that who? Yeah, the computer yeah. yeah. Kasparov. Where it no was. one, I felt like no one was, like in the beginning, everyone thought, let's, oh, I hope Alan wins because the dad winning would be fun. But then he was so dead-eyed in his performance that yeah. I think they were hoping someone else would take him down. Well, people were like, this is just bad for the game. And I'm a do-run-run purist. <laughs> so it was, you know, it was very uh, sad to watch. But he was, he won and he, yes. yeah, that was a badge of honor. Now I many, never, many I never would say that I was not enamored with Alan's performance if I did not have a second half of this, which is Alan has recently given one of the great, truly gave one of the great television performances of the year. (laughs) He did. And this story blows my mind because even the first time you told me about it and described the show he was on, it seemed like a fake show. Yes. Your dad decided late in life, your dad was a lawyer. Yes. Your dad decided he was going to move to Los Angeles. Yes. Obviously, he has uh, his his sons are there. He has grandkids there. There were other reasons to go. Yes. But he also wanted told you he was going to be an actor. Yeah. I mean, he he wanted to be an actor early in life. Right. He was an acting major, and he wanted to, and and you know tried doing stand up and stuff, but he just it it wasn't working fast enough for him. And he was married, and went, I think maybe my mom was pregnant. He's like, I'm going to go to law school, and he became a lawyer for 35 years. But he always wanted, there was a part of him, you know, he'd go see an improv show and you could tell he was living vicariously through it. And long story short, our friend Allison uh, Bills had reached out, was like, hey, I'm working for someone and they're looking for kind of unknowns for this show. 
uh, jury duty. And we thought maybe your dad could put himself on tape to be, to be the judge. So I remember the day he came here, it was like right around Thanksgiving. And my brother and I put him on tape. And I remember after he did his first read, we looked at each other and we're like, pretty pretty good. Give a good read. He was prepared. You know, he wasn't, he, he picked up some panache since he was on the do run run stage <laughs> and we sent, and we sent it in. And then yeah, a couple days later, he found out that he got this part. And again, I was like this, there's a, it's a million shows. Most of them are bad and don't get seen. And they, who the fuck it also, is, when he got, when it got picked up, it wasn't even the same network that it ended up on. Right. It had been in the works for like six years. Right. Like there okay. were people who sold the show and then left and they brought in a new showrunner. And I know so many writers who were like, oh, I worked on that for a week in 2018. Yeah. And so he, he came out to LA and shot it and told me every fucking detail about it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he he would come over and be like, "Had a great day yesterday." You know, you know who really keeps the the, the who's the glue are the the second ads. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, really? Oh, wh- how, what do they do? I don't I don't know. I never I'm not, I haven't been in this business for 20 years. Well, tell me more." Um, but he was very you know enamored by it and and doing it. I think was such a good experience. They mom and dad decided to fully move to LA. And then the show comes out, and it's a legitimate hit. It's yeah. a legitimate hit. Your dad is Judge Alan Rosen. He is Alan the Rosen. judge. He's the judge and jury dude. And he's I've, the glue. I've talked to people about that show, and I'm like, do you know who the judge is? And they're like, yeah, I, I know I've seen him in something. And I was like, no, you haven't. No, he's my no. buddy's dad. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy, man. He it is also like- did the biggest solid for me, which is the the final episode where everybody, the reveal has been revealed. Yes. yes. He's wearing a late night with Seth Meyers hat, which is yes. uh, probably, probably a gift bag uh, to you via him. So mm. the amount of people that sent me texts <laughs> saying the judge in jury duty is uh, wearing a late night hat. He must be a fan of the show. I'm like, oh, he's so much more than that. <laughs> he's so much. You're like, I was there the night. He won do run run. <laughs> he was like deep blue. He was deep blue. Uh, uh, does your guy's dad, does Larry wear a lot of swag? Because my dad, I the best thing I can give him is like, hey, I did this movie called Bright. Do you want this <laughs> sweatshirt? Uh, y- yes. Yes. <laughs> he loves wearing fucking gear from rap gifts and parties. Like, yeah. My dad was wearing a T-shirt the other day, and I, fi- I was like, "He's been wearing it so much." I'm like, "What is it?" He's like, "Oh, it's the, um, it's the place that did my knee surgery." You know what I mean? Uh, and then my mom called him out for it, and he's like, "You go to the health club; everyone's wearing these." And it's like, "I'm okay." <laughs> I have a, I have a joke that I think you'll like, which is very in line with this that I've been trying on stage. Like, ready? It's about how I'm getting older. What? I've reached, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are too, bud. Uh, the joke is, uh, I've reached the age where if someone gives me a free hat, that's my hat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> that's just like, yeah, that's it good, just, yeah. you're just like, okay. What, does it oh cover the, God. keep the sun out? Okay. I got this. I met the lady who owns the Strand Bookstore. Um, I, I literally, it's connected to my head. I, I sleep in it. Um, <laughs> But my dad for showbiz stuff, like the greatest day for him would be like back when he was in Ohio. And someone is like, what is that sweatshirt? He's like, it's actually the Mindy Project season three rap gift. Have you seen it? My son is Morgan. <laughs> like for him, it was just like the only thing that compared for excitement in terms of me giving him things and I don't really do them as much anymore was screeners. Yeah. Hmm. The screener era. Yeah, screeners are are like DVDs that get sent to your house mm. for projects that are sort of under consideration for awards. Movies and that are in the theater, that would currently be in the theater. You would get a DVD of it, like or like the week before. And the dream is they would come out usually in the run-up to the Oscars, that award yes. season, which is early winter. So you would usually have your screeners for Thanksgiving, Christmas. And that would be the bounty you'd bring home, is these, uh, we we need not go to the theaters. My dad literally, like, he would, like, interrupt people's conversation. Oh, you're talking about the True Grit? Are you going to go see it at the theater? Yeah, I saw it. I saw it at home, actually. 
<laughs> like it was the greatest thing uh, uh, for him. By the way, I just rewatched that movie, True Grit. That movie is fantastic. It is a underrated Coen Brothers movie. It is yep. so good. I just Bridges. wanted to get that out there. Bridges, Bridges Damon, Damon, Stein- Steinfeld. <laughs> I think Simon Rich and maybe Mulaney wrote a Steinfeld sketch, which it was Seinfeld, but with her character from <laughs> True Grit. I'm going to have to ask Mulaney if that was right. That's Does, it seems insane that it didn't air if they actually went through <laughs> and wrote it. We're, get, we're getting pretty Hollywood-centric for Pashi over here. So I have one thing yes. to say real quick, and then we'll get okay. away from Hollywood. Real briefly, okay. like I will say the problem that my parents have is that swag from the shows I'm on all have my name on it because I'm only on the one show. And right. if you thought that would, if they would have any problem with that, they don't. So they have to, <laughs> they wear their son's name. About, uh, they're just about town. All right. And no more Hollywood. Josh, that's take it. Us back on that's yeah. it. So, I, I mean, so we are, we are here, you know, ostensibly to talk. Did about your dad, did your dad have back end on jer- Oh, sorry. That was, uh. never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to take a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. This episode of Family Trips is brought to you by McDonald's. Hey, Pashi. Yeah. Did you know that one in eight people in the U.S. have worked at McDonald's at some point in their life? That's crazy. That's so many people. How do you not know that? This is like the third time I've told you. You guys, being an employee at McDonald's means you are making the world's most famous fries on day one of the job, and you're able to make any kid's day with a happy meal. I mean, if you're working at McDonald's, you're throwing more birthday parties than anywhere else on earth and having every type of person in the world come through that store. And obviously we know about the food that McDonald's serves. What you might not know is some of the cool things they offer as an employer. McDonald's offers flexible hours, a schedule that works around your life, which means more time for your life. They also have an English Under the Arches program, which are classes offered to employees looking to improve their English speaking, listening, reading, and writing skills. Career Online High School, where employees can graduate from high school by taking classes online. The Archways to Opportunity, which is a program that offers financial support for employees trying to graduate college. And other career and education advising with success coaches who are available to help employees identify their education needs, review their career goals, and develop a plan for the future. McDonald's is now serving much more than orders. Hey, we wanted to tell you real quick about a show we recently discovered called Pod Crushed. Yeah, man. If you're a fan of the Netflix show You or Gossip Girl, then you may already be familiar with one of the hosts, Penn Badgley. And Penn has a couple of great friends, Nav and Sophie, and they've created a wonderful, beautifully cringy podcast to share stories of our teenage years, the awkwardness, anxiety, heartbreak, and self-discovery that we look back on lovingly, but through gritted teeth. On each episode, they have guests like Drew Barrymore, Conan O'Brien, Jenna Ortega, and more to share their experiences, too. Listen to Podcrushed every Wednesday, wherever you listen to your podcasts. So you got three girls now. Uh, Your lovely wife, Erica. You guys have gone on some family trips, I know. Oh, yes. Um, Yes. What uh, what do the girls like to do? And your girls are how old now? They're 10, 7, and 5, which is now good to travel because- Uh We were at a place where for basically like seven years, traveling was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Erica either had a little baby or or was, you know, pregnant. Um, I mean, we took, we took foster when she was like six weeks old. We were talking about this the other day the first state you went to, that was not the state you were born in. And Erica reminded me that fosters was Massachusetts. Ah. Because we brought baby Foster to the wedding of one Seth Myers, ah, uh, which was no no uh, no kids. I believe it was no kids was the rule. It was no me. kids. We snuck her in, <laughs> snuck her, in. her by one of the little barns, and I would bring her, you know, food <laughs> and let her eat out of and my a hand. little basket of oats. <laughs> yeah, she was fine. She had a great time. Uh, uh, she actually became really good friends with Kristen Wiig. Yeah, mm. uh, also which at the wedding, kind of nice. Uh, so, anyways, traveling was just like a like sucked for so long. Now they are at the place where a long plane ride is not that bad they can watch you know movies our our middle one first time we gave her an ipad we're pretty crazy with screens we just don't let them watch a ton of ipads at home because then when you go on an airplane you can watch as much as you want and she sat down she was like four years old and the movie she wanted to watch she watched superman the richard donner superman and then it ended and she pressed stop and watched superman 2 
She watched both, and that's about five hours of Superman, by the way, of 70s wow. Superman, of Lois Lane, chain smoking Superman. Loved it. That's so funny. So, Ash, we tried Superman with Ash, and Ash is, uh, loves uh, Superman, but he did not want to see a real life Superman. He only wanted to see cartoons. The live action of it put him off right away. She loved it. She loved Gene Hackman. Well, all kids love Hackman. He, he is great. I just showed her the package with him and Tommy Lee Jones. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh-oh, um, showbiz. Showbiz. <laughs> showbiz. Uh, showbiz. The pa- you can talk about the package. Oh, we can talk about the package? <laughs> yeah. Because you're the only ones doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it would be heartbreaking if the package didn't get its shout yeah. out now. It really, I mean, the, the package walked so the fugitive could fly. Whatever. doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so we, where do you guys go? Yeah, where do you go? What we these? normally do, like, we're a big fan of, like, California trips because it's like a three to four hours in the car. But we did do a fantastic trip last Christmas. We went oh, to right. England and France. Yeah. Which was because your wife's brother lives over in England? Her sister lives in uh Richmond, home of one Ted Lasso. <laughs> and so we went there and that was that was amazing. That was like, first of all, when you go on vacation with your kids, it's great because you're not driving probably. And if you go to dinner, you can have like three drinks and like it's fine. You're gonna yeah. take you're gonna walk back home. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> but also a very safe one. Very, very conscious. Yeah. That was uh, uh, just such a great trip. The only problem is my kids are big pukers. Uh-huh. Mm. With like motion or food or just in general? Mo- motion is really what gets them. The, the yeah. time it got us real bad was last summer flying from LA to New York and then like land at JFK and then get in a car and drive like two and a half hours to like Southampton or whatever. And that got me because we were, we rented a tiny little bungalow and, and we were, they were fine for like two hours, whatever, four hour flight, two hours in the car. They're fine. And I'm literally turning off the freeway to get to this bungalow. And I just hear one of the kids just go like, uh, and I look in the rear view mirror and I just see uh, foster open her mouth and just projectile vomit in the rental car. At which point the baby, Eleanor sees her, she starts vomiting and then Peyton vomits. And I literally, I'm seeing this all in the rear view mirror as I'm driving, just like a cascade of vomit. And uh, it was pretty traumatic. So we sold our youngest kid after that. <laughs> to pay for the rental car? To, to pay, pay it was so, they, that's where they get you. They get you in the cleaning fees. Yeah, because that's not covered. Even if you use an Amex, that's not no, covered. No, no. I think that last summer as well, was that one summer ago, two summer ago, we all had dinner. I had dinner with you and your, um, your family. one of yes. Ike's daughter's birthdays, I want to yes, say. Yes, it was Foster's. That was, that was the summer before that. The puke was the summer before that. And we were at um, a nice like, midtown restaurant. Quality Bistro. Quality Bistro. And it, I, I'm saying this with no hyperbole. It was so sweet to watch you with your three daughters because you do love food. You yes. love a nice restaurant. And you were so concerned about your kids enjoying that they were at a nice New York dinner. And I think they really did. Because if you could eat with Ike at a hole in the wall, a place with a D health code rating, Ike's still passing around plates. He's always the host at whatever restaurant he's at, whether or yeah. not he has any. Try some of these hand- cockroaches. They're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was really great. You would have loved it, Josh, because the girls were all, I think, on cloud nine. And uh, and Ike, Ike has this uh, a keen ability to maintain a conversation while he's leaning over a table, passing every little bit of food around. Yeah. Was well, you, we, anytime we used to go to group dinners, Ike would always order for the table. And it was... It was like a monologue listening to yeah. him order. My, my, my real friends get it. Like my yeah. real friends. You're very good it. at and, it. Yeah. And when they, and I, for the record, if someone's like, hey, like one time Hayes was like, hey, it's kind of emasculating when you order for me. No. And <laughs> I said to him, I know, but it's going to make the experience better for everyone. If you just let me handle the shit. We should note our friend Hayes's hobby is emasculating others. Yeah. <laughs> he took that so hard. He moved to Idaho. Yeah. He's like, like, I ordered for him. He's like, I can't live here anymore. You need to go buy an AR-15. 
<laughs> I, you're the only person I've ever seen because sometimes uh, you know waiters have a reputation of upselling. You're the only person I've seen where the waiters try to pump the brakes on you. Every time. You'll be like, how many in these appetizers? Like, how many egg rolls come? They're like, it's two per order. You're like, look, so we'll get six? They're like, no, I think for the table, like, three will do. You're like, five. (laughs) The title of my autobiography is, okay, that's a lot of food. (laughs) Like, it's so embarrassing. Like, I just had dinner with two friends a couple weeks ago, and the waiter goes, wow. And first of all, I don't need your judgment. Like, yeah. like it's this only is going to give you more money. It's going to make everyone happy. And guess what? The fucking food is going to be eaten. Okay. That's true. If I yeah. had a, a propensity to like leave huge portions of food, okay, that's wasteful. I eat it all, and I suffer the slings and arrows of indigestion <laughs> and morning diarrhea. I don't need some waiter to be like, uh, okay, I guess I'll put this in. I guess we have the world's most extreme <laughs> chef. <laughs> we were having lunch in Chicago once and I ordered a club sandwich and I was about to take a bite of it. And you were like, isn't it good? I was like, I haven't, <laughs> it hasn't touched my mouth. Fuck like, man. I am unbearable. I am um, unbearable. I will um, say I'll take that over. My wife, Alexi under orders to a criminal extent. And if she, for example, if we get Chinese food and she orders, I know, especially we have guests over and it's our job to make sure everyone else eats, that I'm going to have a quarter cup of rice and two cubes of chicken and maybe one of the peanuts from the Kung Pao. It is kind of my nightmare is to go somewhere and there's just not enough food. Like, I feel like I panic a little bit. Like a friend of ours one time years ago, invited us over he's like i'm gonna have monday night football and we went over there it was like 14 people and he got like two boxes of popeye's chicken and like eight biscuits and like two orders of sides it was enough for like four people that's the night you ate that dude right (laughs) (laughs) that's the night you killed and ate a dude you and you said anymore, you? You, you said no jury will convict me, <laughs> and they did it. <laughs> well, your dad. It turned out they, your dad was the judge. Honestly, guys, please edit that out. I don't want people to think that I was so hungry I murdered and ate one of my own friends. <laughs> um, we didn't. We let our editor go. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there was. I feel like when there was a time in Amsterdam when money money was tight. Like we weren't. We were doing fine over there, but we weren't yeah, crushing but, it. Yeah. And there was a thing where if you had. A movie ticket stub. Oh God! It was two for one whoppers, and big I want to say big kings, big kings, and yeah. you and our buddy Dave Buckman would just yep. hang out, yep. <laughs> like behind where yep. the theater would exit, and just oh, see if people would throw it, their stuff. You stubs wouldn't on go to a movie to get a spare stub. What do you think? I have movie money? <laughs> no, I would just. <laughs> ca- and it wasn't like we would like hang out behind the theater. We would just walk through that path and, you know, stop and tie my shoe for a couple minutes. And then <laughs> sometimes people come out and, you know, Dutch people, they don't care. They're just like, oh, this movie was terrible. Then throw their ticket in the air. And then I would take it. And I would go into the Burger King. And I would be like, can I please have two hamburgers? <laughs> and they were like, how was the film Space Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> And I would say, great. Yeah, they instituted a rule at the uh, the Burger King by the movie theaters that you had to say at least three plot points. <laughs> <laughs> it was known as the, the Buckman Barinholtz conundrum. <laughs> yes, and did all the space cowboys live? Sadly, Tommy Lee Jones didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Made in the package. When I think about you, Ike, I don't think about I don't think about a real skier. But you and the family, you've got, you guys have gone to, to Utah or Colorado and like, yes. and, but you don't ski when you I go. will never ski. I will never ski. You just take that opportunity to, to watch football in a hotel or. Yeah. Oh my God. It's the greatest. Listen, skiing is fucking bullshit. I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, I, I love, I love to go and uh, any process where it's like, oh, to get, just to get ready to ski 45 minutes. 45 mm. fucking minutes. Then you do it. Can I jump in and say, I bet you don't have the best feet for boots? No. I have <laughs> big fucking wide feet. They hurt. They, they're they strapping you in. 
Then it's like, oh, great. I'm going to go up a mountain and do this thing that has no natural braking system. And then like, yeah, love to have reconstructed knee surgery at 46. Love to be on one of those little scooters where your back foot is out. Like those look really cool. Uh, I fucking hate skiing. It's bullshit. But I love opera ski. I love going to the the mountain, you know. The kids all go. Erica goes. I like to go to the gym. I do a little workout. I maybe smoke a little bit of pot. And then it's lunch. And then it's opera ski. So uh, the actual act of skiing. Yeah, do the kids ever say, like, Daddy, like, come skiing with us? Papa, like- Papa, be with us. <laughs> And I say, fuck that. I say to them, I go, oh, yeah, I'm going to have reconstructive knee surgery. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> no, yeah, no, they don't. They know. They know it's better for all involved. It's, it's like ordering food. With me. I would also imagine, you know, based on my experiences with your wife, Erica, I bet they feel total comfort with her. She seems like she's got it all well in the pocket. I don't like her actually. They don't, they don't, <laughs> don't, they always say to me, they'll, she'll walk out of the room and they'll be like, I don't trust that lady. Uh, yeah. They call no, her they, that lady. They don't even call they, her mom. They don't call her mom or Erica even. They're just like that one, that one. No. Yeah. They, if God forbid something happened to me, like I would, they would be fine because like Erica yeah. runs the shit and they, they really respect her. They, no. I have this phrase I've been trying I get no respect. Oh, that's good. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a follow-up for it. Anyway. You don't kinda, seem yeah. to, but you know, the weird thing about guy yeah, you get no respect is you've, you've said very little in which our listeners would think you demand respect. Well, like I demand way. it, but I don't, <laughs> oh, right. my actions don't. Yeah. Don't I know I it. take what you mean, but I, yeah, I, yeah. the point is I get no respect in my own house. When you were in, the hospital recently with this pneumonia yes. thing. When I heard about it, I texted Erica, your wife, yes. and I was like, hey, I think you probably- What are you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing today? You smell blood in the water. <laughs> yeah, Do you so want to uh, have dinner tonight at Yamashiro? <laughs> Josh was like, oh, I wait 10 years to propose, and now Erica <laughs> might be coming on the market. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I, already, uh, I already got three kids made. <laughs> I already cooked. <laughs> uh, you, you, you texted her. You were the only friend that texted her. But I was also like, I, I wanted to text to be like, if there's anything I can do, if you know, if you need me to do any like grocery shopping or bring over anything, I'm happy to do it. But it was all, I was also sort of like, yeah, I, I don't imagine there's another woman that I know that has this more under control. Yeah. Than her. <laughs> yeah. Although she is funny. The one time. She is really, truly nervous and flustered is when she has to order dinner. Like if I'm mm-hmm. driving, I'm in traffic, I'm like, can you order dinner? Because she knows how, what a fucking blimpo I am and what a, yeah. just a freak I am when it comes to food. And she's just like a visibly frazzled. If she's like, I, I, I don't know what you want. In her defense, it would be like Mozart saying to his wife, you play piano tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, other than that you're good at ordering, I'm not quite sure how you landed, Erica. Like, that might be why. Yeah, and like Mozart, I have tertiary syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> See, this guy and knows you're, easy, you're easily spooked. <laughs> I will be buried in a pauper's unmarked grave. <laughs> you already bought it. That was amazing. I was like, I don't you know where it is. But... Get it marked. And you're like, no, I'm just going to get the unmarked one. I know how yeah. this ends. It's, it's the opposite of uh, bring a trailer, that website. It's just like bring your body. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to ask about beach vacations. Yes. But I want to preface it by saying you are, we spent, you know, our wonderful years in Amsterdam, some of the best times of my life. Yeah. Amsterdam, famously not a sunny place. No. You are the only person I ever met who got badly sunburned in Amsterdam. The worst sunburn I've ever had in my life. Oh, it was monstrous. I mean, Posh was there for all of it. So uh, a young lady asked me to, she's like, do you want to go to the beach with us? A young Dutch girl. And I didn't even know they had beaches there. I was like, yeah, sure. And we went. I think if a young Dutch girl asked you that, you did not say it with that tossed off way. Here, I'll do it. Yeah, nah. Yeah, be it. (laughs) I think I said, yes, I'll go to the beach. Yes, let's leave right now. I'm wearing my swimsuit already. Let's go. 
And we got there and she was me and her and one of her friends. And we got there and like right away, they were like, boop, tops off. Which, again, so for you a finally 21, saw him. You waited till you, you, that's well. That no, was, I was respectful. I didn't look. I didn't look <laughs> a scumbag. All right. Uh, yeah, no, I was definitely distracted and trying to be cool and like just being like, "Yes, hey, well, let's drink some wine," you know. And I just didn't put any sunscreen on. And again, in my defense, it's fucking like this. It's not like the Southern California beach. Like it's literally the low countries. Like it's foggy yeah. and shit. It's where boats land for invasions. It's that kind of beach. Yes. It's yeah. basically Normandy, but in, in right. uh, yes. And uh, yeah, the train ride home, I remember being like, why is this fucking train so hot? And then I w- got home and I looked at myself in the mirror and I did like a double take and I was completely lobsterized. I remember I showed up at the theater. I remember Josh being like, what the fuck happened to you? Yeah. I mean, I'm no stranger to this, this type of red. So I, yes. I recognized it. I saw myself in you. In yes. That day. And we had to do, on Saturday nights, we did double shows. So I walked out on stage as Jerry, my award-winning Jerry Springer impression. Rest in peace. And people started laughing as I walked on stage. Like, it looked like I was wearing, like, red makeup or something. <laughs> and... I remember someone was like, one of the waitresses was like, you need yogurt, put yogurt on the burn. And the worst part of the burn was like right at the top of my thigh, right to above my knee. Um, like basically this yeah. here. Yeah. And uh, I remember going to the back, uh, the backstage area, pulling my pants down and a waitress brought me a cup of yogurt. And I just slathered yogurt all over my thighs and a woman walked in, an audience member walked in. Because the theater was set up. There was there was the theater, the stage where the audience was, and then there was a back bar. Yep. And the where the wait staff would get, you know, their drinks and bring them out. And then next to the back bar was a door to the women's restroom. Women's room, yeah. And then there were some coat racks, and then there was a door in that little back area to backstage. People and- were constantly walking in backstage thinking it was the women's bathroom. Yeah. And that night this woman walked in and saw me from the back with my pants around my ankles, like going, ah, with just like white, creamy, bad, whatever the fuck dripping down. And even amongst a tolerant Dutch society, that was a bridge too far. Even in 1999, (laughs) you can't do that kind of stuff. (laughs) And and so I made eye contact with her and I just goes, uh, wrong room, wrong room. And um, you're like, don't tell the rest of the audience about this. Please, it's between <laughs> us. And uh, I married that woman and we have three children together. <laughs> the thing I remember about this, that happened after I'd left. I would come back and visit. I came back and visited and just on the way through the theater, Three different people told me the story about Ike getting caught putting yogurt on his thighs. <laughs> and then when I finally saw you, you said, Sufi, I got the craziest story. I'm like, is it yogurt thighs? And you're like, oh, no. It's out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yogurt thighs. Old yogurt thighs, Baron Holtz. I'm sorry to put you in this position, Ike, but I do consider this a travel advisory. Although I do think it's better now. Because I think all three of us would say Amsterdam is a must-visit city. I just yes. went back. I went back this summer for the 30th anniversary of the theater. Just I, I have such a love affair with that city. The taxi drivers in the late 90s, early 2000s were a little uh, prickly. They were gangsters. They were gangsters. They were actual gangsters. But like gangsters in like three-piece suits and beautiful Mercedes. Yeah. yeah. They had like taxi licenses that were worth like 200,000 guilders or whatnot. Yeah. And they had a monopoly and they behaved yeah. like no one was ever coming for their monopoly. And Ike, you have a story about a Dutch taxi driver that's one of my favorites. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. He was a dick. They were all dicks. I never had a Dutch taxi driver who was like, I was like, oh, this is a great conversation. Thank you. 30% tip. They were all just like rude and so long ago, but I remember I said, stop right here. And he goes, no, no, no. And he, he went like around the other side of the tram track. And I was like, I just was like, it's not where I wanted. I wanted to go fucking back there. And he kind of turned to me and kind of like leaned over and was like, get the fuck out. And kind of just that movement, 
led me to fucking swing at him <laughs> over the top, hit him right on the side of the head. But yeah, I, I take great pride that I fucking punched a taxi driver. I remember another night, another guy, and I was with I was with uh, uh, Oscar winner Jordan Peele, and fucking another guy was being a dick and started yelling at us. Wait, wasn't there one where you were uh, the radio was too loud and you you could, were trying to turn it down? Maybe that was one with Jordan. But I remember we both got out, and I remember Jordan. Jordan looks at the guy and goes, "What's up, motherfucker?" And it was like <laughs> Jordan Peele. It's like this is so funny to see him that mad. Yeah, they the cab drivers are pieces of shit. I wish I had, as a prank, hired two people dressed as um, Dutch police to break into your home office right now and say, <laughs> "We found him. <laughs> We've been working this uh, case for many years." You're coming with us, yogurt thighs. <laughs> I should also say, and again, go to Amsterdam. The best. The best. Maybe take the train from the airport into the uh, city. But yeah, because I went this summer. And the other thing I'll say about um, Dutch taxi drivers is uh, no matter the time of day, and usually uh, for American travelers, you've taken a red eye, you land somewhere between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning after half a night's sleep, basically. And then you get into a Dutch taxi, and this is the music that's playing. Dunson, Dunson, Janssen, Dunson, Dunson, Janssen. Like, you can't believe it. Yeah, that yeah, hour yeah. of the morning. It's, it has not changed a, a whit in 20 years. 800 beats per minute. They have such good taste, Dutch people, in all areas. <laughs> we love it. Go. We love it. We love it, folks. <laughs> I, sometimes when I was performing there, do you remember the miniseries John Adams? Yeah, of course. Remember when when Giamatti goes to the Dutch people and is it's like, the best. we would really like your help. And they're just staring at him and they're like, why should we help you? Like, that's what I felt like performing for those people sometimes. And they would make us go hang out with them afterwards. Yeah. And Dutch people don't give a fuck. They'll be like, eh, not your best show tonight. I uh, don't <laughs> think maybe uh, that one wasn't a good one. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Yap. Thank you. You're a man named Yap. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we um, should we ask Ike his questions, Josh? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. All right, Isaac. Here we go. Uh, you can only pick one of these. Oof. Your ideal vacation is it relaxing, adventurous, or educational? Relaxing. Very nice. Your favorite means of transportation: train, plane, automobile, boat, on foot, bicycle. Train. Yeah, love, love a, nice a train. train. Love a nice train. What's your longest train ride, Ike? Have the you ever taken a good long one? Train ride would probably be Oh, the Orient Express, and somebody got murdered, didn't Someone they? Someone got murdered. It was not great. <laughs> it wasn't great. Um we figured out who did it though. Probably what is it? England, France? Okay. That's probably it. Channel? Love did it. you go through the, the channel? channel? I took the channel, yeah. yeah. Loved it. Very nice. Eurostar. If you could take a vacation with any family other than your own. Which Ooh. would it be? This could be fictional, could be anyone from history, any family from history. You could say like historically, like, oh, the Borgias, because they had so much like wealth and stuff. But I'm going to say the goddamn Myers family, because oh, yeah. there's no other family where I'm closer with more than one sibling. So there you yeah. go. If we were on the fence about you being the third Myers brother, you just locked that it. That was in. it. Boom. Yeah. Boom. And if you had to be stranded on a desert island with one member of your family, who would uh, it be? Uh, does this mean my wife and kids or like my parents? Or... Also your parents, if they're yeah. your family. You can be a distant family. cousin. It just has to be family. I'm going to say my wife so we can have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> You're from Chicago. Would you recommend Chicago as a vacation destination? Oh, absolutely. There's a couple uh, spots you want to avoid. But uh, no, Chicago is, uh, uh, I might take my kids there quite a bit. And it is like I'm Mary glad Daly. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we just I mean, left it, that. The show was about trips, I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh, one one of the things Mary Daly did there is he did make the city very kid friendly, and there's just so much uh, culture and stuff there, and there's amazing food. People drink a lot, yeah. like a lot. But it's a great vacation. Spot. Where, if you had a family of kids your age and you were in Chicago for one night, where would you take them to eat? Man, that's tough. I mean, I would have to get them some kind of pizza probably. Yeah. So I'd probably take them to Lumel's and get like a deep dish, but also get them a tavern style too. So they get yeah. a little bit of thick and thin. I think Lumel Nadis is a very, because they have a little of both. So, so good. good. So good. So good. And then Souf. 
I have a question for you, but real quick, since you're now officially a Myers brother. Yeah. I have a question for you. We were on the fence about whether we were going to call this family trips with the Myers brothers or family trips with the Myers boys. Do you think we made the right choice? Yes. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. Josh disagrees. Yeah. yeah, I just like the way boys sounded better. But uh. but I think you could just do, how about this? How about this, ready? Family trip with the Myers brothers, parentheses, boys. <laughs> Uh, the Ike, is a, Ike, Ike is a guy who likes to have his cake and eat it too. Although putting parentheses boys is not eating it too. It's like taking a fucking big old shit on the cake. <laughs> it's like touching. It's like touching the cake. It's like touching. <laughs> he touched the cake a little bit, and then <laughs> while you were watching him, he very slowly, he very slowly like, lip, moved lip it around the whole. And you go, what are you doing? I go nothing. No. <laughs> All right, ready? Uh, have you ever been in the Grand Canyon? No. Do you want to go? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about doing that. That's like a, a family trip we're talking about doing. Okay. Great. Somebody fell off this year. They, they're they okay, but just FYI. They're okay? Yeah. Yeah, they're okay. 13-year-old, um, a kid oh. who's fine. Thank God. He's fine. Okay. 100 feet. But 100 feet. Fell 100 it's feet. Pretty fucking far. How many feet do you think you'd have to fall, Ike, before you were definitely dead? For me? Yeah. Uh, just a... Just- <laughs> Just five, six feet. <laughs> just if I stand on this little end table right here and I just fall. Also, just, Ike, by the it. way, when he showed us, I'm sorry this isn't a visual medium. When Ike showed us where he put his yogurt on his thighs, he lifted up his leg. There was, it looks as though you're naked from the waist down because we I didn't am. even see a short. And then are you wearing like purple Crocs? Purple Crocs with socks? Yeah, I am. And it's funny you guys <laughs> call that because you were in the take hospital? A, take a, hold it up again. We might need a screen grab for the show notes. <laughs> So I'm wearing these. First of all, these were a gift from the Lakers. I'm wearing these on Larchmont, which is a street right by my house. And I'm putting money in the meter and the meter's not working. And so I go to the next machine, whatever. And a guy comes over and goes to that one that I was trying to use. And I go, oh, I think that's broken. He goes, I'll tell you what's fucking broken. Those shoes. <laughs> and for a second, I look at him and I, I just, based on his look and the fact that he ripped on me, I was like, I thought it was Bill Burr for a second, but I don't like know Bill Burr. So I kind of went, <laughs> and then I looked at him and I realized just some fucking guy. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, seriously, dude, purple Crocs. <laughs> what the fuck? And like, I was so surprised. Like, I guess when someone does that, there's like two things you could do. One is do what I did and just go like, <laughs> you know, or the other thing is be like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> and get into like some kind of fight. But I just kind of laughed, but it was just like, it was so strange. It was like a drive by roasting. Yeah. Yeah. Man. The tricky thing about option two of getting into a fight is um, them's not fighting shoes. You're wearing. Crocs are not. They're not good for fighting. So I not. think. I no. think if they can get you on the ground where you're wearing Crocs, it's over. Oh yeah, I think I saw a clip of like those people that were fighting in like South Carolina, and like one guy, like the cops dragged him and his feet went through the Crocs, so the Crocs were like halfway up his shin. <laughs> it was not a good look. Yeah, they are a very listen for comfortability and ease, top of the line. For combat. Can't do much worse. <laughs> well, we love you very much. When do we start the podcast? Any minute now. Any minute. Guys, I got to tell you, you I've, I love you. I've done four different podcasts with other brothers in the last couple of weeks. Uh-huh. And this one, number one. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. I did the Menendez Brothers podcast last Oh, what's that one called? Oh, wow. What's that one called? It's called... Get us out <laughs> with the Menendez brothers, parentheses, boys. <laughs> so you gave it to them too? You'd already given it to them. He got the idea from them. Oh, he got you stealing it. I just want everyone to have the same oh, that's name. that's good. Yeah, podcast. run afoul of the Menendez brothers. Yeah, that, good that seems like a good idea. Because when they get out in 17 years, uh, I'm sure they won't come looking for revenge. At least you didn't tell them you live near Larchmont. All right, we love you. Love you, boys. <laughs> Love you, Ike. Bye. Thank you. Grew up an apartment up in Chicago. Taking family road trips down to Ohio. Dad had a good year, found somewhere else to go. Down to O. Chorios. 
That's in Jamaica an all-inclusive thing Eating tons of burgers Drinking tons of ting Got a job in Amsterdam and now you're the king Now the family comes to you Are such cool guys tonight Eating loose nuts That come with no shell Oh, I can't hear his pops Are getting high tonight Mom and John 